I'm going to show you an example of a report, in this case modeled off a government report, using Quarto, and so showing you how to do some of the things that we often need to do within uh, gray modder government reports, where we have a lot of tables, and we need to be creating these tiny tables dynamically, updating them. By, by dynamically, I mean that we don't necessarily know how many tables we're going to need. We have a, con a, a set format for our tables, but the number that we're going to be needing in each chapter will just vary depending on the data uh, for that chapter. So here is an example report. It's the HTML. We can look at this in PDF. So there we go. Here's the PDF version of that. These are all just generated with the, the Quarto code. It is being output to all these formats. And I also have uh, you know, this Word format. So yes, OK. You can see it's going to have a format. You can see I've used a template there to give it kind of a, a look, kind of generic, but definitely not the default look. Let's start with imagining how our team might interact with this report. The code for this report is here in this GitHub repository, and I'm hosting it, in this case, with GitHub Pages. Our team that is working on this report has people with various skills. We have some people who are doing the coding. So for example, they would code up this Quarto template. Other people are working on the data. Other people are working on the content, the text. And, um, and then the whole team, most likely, is looking over the report and trying to catch issues with it. So let's start with the, the case where we have the team reviewing this report. We have this in HTML, so they can easily scroll, scroll through. Each of these is a chapter with a bunch of tables. And let's hop to, let's try to lower Columbia. Okay, so you can see the structure of the chapters. All the structure is the same. So we have a chapter, and the format is the same. It's got some uh, text. In this case, I've just you know, put some you know, fake text in here, but obviously this would be adapted for this particular uh, chapter by whoever's working on that. And then we'll have a uh, general location. Here we have this which is updated. This isn't done um, manually. The data for where to put that point is in a, um, a data set that's just loaded. And then we have a, um, some info about the trends, and then we'll have a generic uh, plotting of the trends. And then we have our raw data, and we're going to have a table for each of the populations that are within this region. So in this particular one, we have four, but you notice in Lower Columbia, we have quite a few more here. And all of this is being generated dynamically. Only the text will be customized. These uh, table um, links that you see here are also um, going to be uh, generated dynamically. Uh, I'll show you that in a moment. So let's imagine now we're in the step where we have our team looking at this, and the team is looking over this, and they quickly notice, oh, my goodness, there's something wrong here. So that should not look like that. So um, the person who's looking at this doesn't know what's wrong, but they can see there's a problem. So they're just going to do a screenshot of that and save to clipboard, and they're going to hit report an issue. So here they go. And they say the, what was it, Lower uh, Columbia uh, Chinook Kalama has problem. So, you know, if they had put that um, without um, being able to show a picture, nobody would really quite know what they mean. But because I can put a picture there, the team, you know, whoever's job it's going to be to figure out what's going on here, they immediately know, ah, okay, yeah, we've got some extra points there. 
and the whole team can see this and it may be that somebody uh, from the data team has an idea so you know they can put a comment here hey I, you know I think I think um, Kalama uh, River Fall is uh, in there there by accident so this person, it's not their job to fix that problem, but they have some information that's going to be helpful to the team member who needs to fix that. And that was done, you know, really quickly. You can now just go back to the report, and whoever's looking at this can continue looking at it. And maybe they notice something else. Maybe they notice, hey, wait a second, you know, it's a different person. Let's say it's somebody from, you know, who's going to be, uh, the production team or you know whoever's going to be using this report and they say you know hey the order of all these chapters is problematic you've ordered it by um, region but actually we need to order it by species so they can quickly put this in here and imagine like you know what happened in the past it would be kind of endless emails and it's really hard keeping track of what you need to do and so the, and who asked for that so here we know who's asking for it, and, um, and then we say order by species, and then just so there's no doubt, I'm going to put the image in there too. There we go. All right, so now, um, now we have a few issues that we want to work on, so change order here, and we've got to fix that problem. You know, maybe somebody noticed something else. All the 2014 data in the Upper Columbia Chinook is wrong. Oh, wow, what's going on there? So, um, so now we have this, and it's all recorded here, and the team can start working on this and decide who needs to deal with that problem. So now let's jump over to uh, our studio where I'm going to work on this. So now I'm not in the browser anymore. I'm now in our studio. And the first thing I'm going to deal with is um, fixing up the chapter order. And I'll show you how we can fix that problem and how fast that is. So let's imagine that we were doing this report manually. Well, changing chapter order is a really bad thing. That changes all the figure numbers, all the table numbers. Wherever you have those cross references in your, ta your text, you have to update that. Um, maybe if you've got a word genius, they can... Um, you know, when you shift things around, it's going to automatically update. But, you know, we're, we're outputting to multiple formats here, HTML, Word, and PDF, because that's the three formats that we need to work in. And we need to have everything update across all three formats. Well, let's go ahead and do it. So to change the order into the order I was asked to put in, I'm going to move the steelhead here. And I'm going to move the Chinook up here. Oops. Uh, still have, that's okay. I just want to get this last Chinook up here. Get it right there. There we go. Okay. So that's ordered. And then I am going to render. I'm only going to render to HTML um, just because it's going to be faster. But, you know, normally I render to all formats. Let's do that. So what's going to be happening is it's going to update all my tables. It's going to, uh, all my table numbers. It's going to update all my chapter numbers for me. It's going to remake my table of contents for me. It's going to update all my table numbers that are in the text where I have cross references, all that for me. Stuff that would take me hours and hours with lots of errors is being done as I speak. So we're 30 seconds in. Let's see how much longer this is going to take. Shouldn't take too much longer. Okay, it's working away. So uh, there we go. Okay, how long did that take? Background job. Okay, 55 seconds, a little bit less than that, and we have our new report. We now have the Chinook all here. If we hop in here and we look at our table numbers, look at that. All our table numbers are right. Our chapter numbers are right. Um, if we look at the, if we were to look at the PDF, remember I didn't build it, um, but if I looked at that, 
it would have the table of contents correct. It would have our listing of all our tables there. So uh, what I mean by that is if you look at this PDF here, you'll see that it's auto-generating our list of tables for us. So this would all be updated and correctly numbered for us and all the links, all this stuff where we can just click and jump, all that is going to be redone for us just automatically. Um, if you've ever worked on manual reports, you know it is incredible amount of drudgery whenever somebody wants you to move things around. We've removed that drudgery. So let me show you um, a, another feature that's really nice when we're working in this framework, and that is dealing with citations. So importing citations is often a real pain, but we can automatically include those or have those that are our reference library access to us when we're in Quarto. And it has a really nice integration with Zotero. If you use that, if you don't use that, you can always upload things to Zotero. It's, um, it's got a good import features. Here I have a group library, so the whole team that's working on this report has this group library and they're putting things in. And as they put things in here, I sync it up to my desktop down here. So I have that library on my desktop also. And now when I go here, I'm going to open up the text file. I'm going to open up, say, the conclusion. I'm in the visual editor, now I'm in our studio, and let's say I want to add a reference, and um, I need to reference um, the work of, and I could do, I go at sign, and I have told uh, our studio by using the tools preferences, uh, project uh, preferences, to link to the Zotero group library for this report. So it's not doing all my Zotero libraries, it's just the one for this report. And it is looking there. Now this, this library is not actually in this here, listed here. I do have some bibliographies listed here. You see this .bib and this Seder, they, they are there. But that's not the only ones I have access to. I have also access to my Zotero one. So I can go and look, and I'm not really sure what I'm looking for. I do know it has something to do with sharks, though. So I'm just going to look shark. Aha. Uh, and I didn't remember the um, author name, uh, but I knew it was about sharks. And so here, and here are the three ones that mention sharks. Great. And this is the one that I wanted, this hearty one. So yep, and I can double check. Yep, 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 yep. That's the one I want. And, oh, and it's actually not in my references. Do you want me to add it? Yeah, that'd be great. Let's put it in there. Okay, so that's it. So I have added that reference. You'll notice that um, when I did at sign, it also said DOI. So I could also add this reference just if I had the DOI. And that would automatically grab it for me and put it into my uh, reference bib. So I had it. And it's going to format them for me. That's great. Similarly to my um, uh, citations, I also probably want to be able to reference my tables. There's a whole lot in here. And, um, oops, I don't have to say to uh, this um, is a, I can do at, and uh, the it starts with table. So, that is going to show me all my tables that are in here. Well, there's a lot of them, so I better like uh, narrow it down a bit. Actually, I know that it is uh, Interior Columbia something. And yes, uh, I'm looking for the Chinook. I've got them by number. I probably might not remember what number goes with what population, but fortunately, I can also see the captions here. And actually, I'm looking for NTI. So add that there. OK. So it's that easy, and as I move things around, it's going to properly update that table number here. So save that. Okay, so those are some really nice features. Now I want to show you the structure of this and how you get those dynamically built uh, tables in there so you're not like, you know, individually inputting your tables in there. 
And that uh, work is it's kind of a, a few different pieces to this. So first off, let's look at a chapter. Here's the um, uh, Columbia River Chum here. All the chapters have the same format. I'll show you actually in the template here. So they all have like the ESU name, they have some text, they have a general location. So the only thing that you're changing is adding the text in these sections. And then they have this, they're adding these uh, child here. And this is the uh, part that is grabbing the figure and altering that for this chapter. And the way it knows what it's looking for is it's using these codes up here. It's got the title. And then this uh, data ID is the critical part because this data ID is used in the data uh, files. And then we have a section on recent trends. You add your own text here. Here's the thing. It's adding this child. All the chapters look exactly the same. So the key thing is what do these children look like? Um, by the way, in Quarto, there is the include a file uh, feature. It's curly bracket. Uh, curly bracket include dot dot yeah, include file name. Uh, I'm not using that. Um, I've had some problems with it. I'm sure they'll fix it, but for now the um, child feature that I'm familiar with from R Markdown is working great. Let's hop over to R Tables R Markdown, and that is in the Figure Tables folder. So let's head over here. So let's look at. Um, raw tables. So this is the most complex one because this one I'm going through a for loop and I need to set things up so that it will properly get the table, a number, and the uh, table caption um, in that for loop. And that, that requires a little um, kind of some tricks. Um, and particularly, we want to use the knit expand function that's coming from the knitter package. And what that's going to allow us to do is it's going to allow us to use dynamic variables in this template. And that variable is going to be replaced with whatever its value is at the time that this knit expand was called. And we want that because we need to know what table we're on and we're going to need to know what uh, data ID we're on. So this, this our tables was called within a chapter and within that chapter data ID is specified so it's flowing in from that and then here it's going through a for loop and it's going through all the tables that are in this data file. Now let's hop and take a look at this template. Raw table, here we go. Okay. So we'll start from the top here. So um, these are just some uh, functions that are uh, used commonly. I guess I should show you the, what that looks like because there's some important things at the top here. The important thing that's happening is whatever you know uh, packages I want. But this is the key thing. I need to know if I'm making a HTML, PDF, or Word. And that is because I've found that um, some table engines work a lot better in PDF versus uh, flex tape versus in Word and HTML. So flex table works great in Word, but cable cable extra works great in PDF. I spent a lot of time fighting to try to make you know to use one table engine, and you know like one thing would work great in Word, and then but that same tweak I did to make it work in Word would then break things in PDF. I finally realized you know why am I fighting that? I just use a different table engine for PDF versus. Uh, Word and HTML. And once I just did that, then everything has been quite easy. Okay, so I don't need to show you the rest there. Okay, so back here, so that's how it knows what um, I'm doing HTML, Word, or PDF. And then I am getting my data here, and it's use, you see this curly bracket, curly bracket? So it's using the value of data idea at the time that this is, was called. Now, in this case, I'm not positive I needed to do that here because it's not because that data ID is not changing in the for loop. But definitely when I'm in the for loop, I do need to use it because that value each time I'm in the for loop is keeps changing. 
and I need it to use the value while I'm in the for the value that's in the for loop. So what I'm you know cycling over. So down here, so there I grab the data and I set up a few other things here. Okay, it's grabbing this variable that's changing the start year. Okay. I want to add new pages between my tables, so I'm going to set that up there. And here's my function that I've written to create my tables. It's just kind of customized for what I want. You'll notice here I have, if the table is in its flex table, do it this way. If it's a uh, cable, then I want to do it that way. So I'm just that's what features that work well in this context. And then this is the key thing that I want here. So I have um, this is creating uh, that out should not be there. This is the part here where I'm creating the table and it's calling this table count. So the template, what is the template returning? The template is returning a either flex table or cable object. That's what's happening right here that it's creating. It's not really returning it, but that it's making that. And then when we go back here, you see in this for loop, it is doing that knit expand, and it's just cobbling all of these together. But each one is using a different table number. That's being updated for each one. And then down here, we're going to knit this uh, out here, and it's just going to appear. So it's kind of a trick. You need to know how to, how to do that. But you can use this feature over and over again whenever you need to be um, doing something within a for loop. So you need to be creating tables um, and you, you don't know how many tables you're going to be um, creating. Okay, so that's the basic um, structure there. And yeah, I think that's, that's it. If you want to see more, go ahead and check out the repo and kind of uh, poke around on the, the different files. The key one is that Quarto YAML. See what that looks like. Go ahead and, and uh, you can clone it and run it yourself.